All right, welcome to our proofs hints. So if you are smart enough to be watching this video, you're going to get a couple of freebies for your homework from um, December 10th. So our first proof, this time you have to fill in some statements and reasons. So we always know that the first statement is always comes from the given. So if E is a midpoint of AC, then by definition of midpoint, I know that segment AE is equal to segment EC. And then I had some other given information right here. That was another piece that wasn't included at the very beginning of the proof, and sometimes that happens. So DE equals EC. So since AE equals EC and DE equals EC, I can substitute EC and DE. I can replace. So that's substitution. And then, by definition of congruence, what that means is since these two segments are equal in length, they're also congruent to each other. So segment AE is congruent to segment DE. A little kind of housekeeping detail work. Since this is statement five is not exactly like we wanted our proof to look, our ending statement, we use symmetric property to switch it around. So we're always looking to see, you know, where do we want to get to and what steps do we need to get there? So they're always interconnected and related steps. Now let's talk about the big challenge, which is doing a proof start to finish without anything having already been done for you. So we always want to keep in mind where are we starting, where do we want to get to, and how can the picture help us? So we always start with what's given. And then what I like to do is if there's a diagram included, which in geometry there almost always is, I'm going to mark, if I can, the congruent pieces. So BC is congruent to DE. And then since this has been kind of split up into parts, I'm not really going to mark this part with congruent markings, but just we know that the entire segment A to C equals the entire segment from D to F. So what we're trying to show is that because BC and DE are also equal. Basically, if I took those off the two segments, then what I'm left with, AB and EF, have to be equal to each other. So while it looks like you could just say, hey, just remove those and then these are equal, it's not that easy. We have to prove it. So because these are congruent, we also know that their lengths are equal. So AC is equal to DF, BC equals DE. So you think about a proof is because I know they're congruent, what else can I do? So this is definition of congruence. Then you might think, okay, now I don't know where to go from here. But think about what you need to get to. I need somehow to get AB into my problem. Right now, AB is nowhere to be found. I also need to get segment EF into the problem, and right now, it's, it's nowhere in this problem. But if we look at the segments, okay, point B is between A and C, point E is between D and F. So we rely on our segment addition. So you can write it all in one step, or we can separate them. So I'm going to write them both together. So AB plus BC equals AC, and DE plus EF equals DS. That segment. And what that does for us again is it gets A, B, and E, F into the problem. Okay. Now we think, okay, we have these two segments and we wanted to somehow be able to take away B, C, and D, E. Okay. I can't subtract them unless I know I subtract the same thing from two sides of an equation. So there must have been a reason to include this information. So if you look, AC is equal to DF. 
I can substitute. I can put DF in place of AC. So I can rewrite this. AB plus BC equals DF. And that starts to look like this one now. So I'm kind of getting somewhere in my little puzzle. So this is substitution. Now I can look and see, oh, wait a minute. Now this sum equals DF, and this sum right here equals DF. So I have two different addition problems equaling the same thing. So again, I'm going to use my substitution property to help me out. So I know that AB plus BC equals DE plus EF. Since they're both equal to DF, I can substitute. So now we're getting closer because we can start thinking about taking away BC and DE. But in math, I can only subtract a number from both sides if it's the same number. That's the subtraction property. So I have to see, well, is BC equal to DE? And if you go up to back up here to this step, we see that it is. So you can substitute DE in place of BC. So I know it seems like a lot of detail, but all these little details are important. So substitution you're going to find is used a lot to get where you need to go. So now we've worked A, B, and E, F into the problem. We're going to be able to subtract this segment, which is the same as subtracting this segment. And that's going to leave us with A, B equals E, F. So if you're not really sure what happened there, we subtracted DE. And then we're almost done. Because two segments are equal, that also means they're congruent. So we're back to the definition of congruence again. So segment AB is congruent to segment EF. So we've shown mathematically, instead of just saying, well, it looks like it, so that's what you can do. So we've shown mathematically why we can remove segment DE, like cut it off, and we can remove segment BC, cut it off, and AB would be the same length as EF. So that's your freebie proof, and good luck on the other ones.